Alright, so I got a versus video for you today. Kyosho Mad Force Cruiser VE. Going up against the Axial SMT10. In my opinion, the two best solid axle shaft driven monster trucks on the market. And even though the Kyosho is the A scale and the Axial is a 10 scale, I think it's a pretty good comparison because the Kyosho is mostly stock other than a steering upgrade and the Axial is pretty heavily modified. So let's take a little closer look at it. Alright, so if you take a look on the right, it's the Kyosho Mad Force Axle. And if you compare that to the Axle SMT10, it's way bigger. And that's because the Kyosho is an A scale and the SMT is a 10 scale. So even though they both have about the same wheelbase, the difference between an 8th and a 10th is the size of the component. So the Kyosho is going to be way stronger. And this axle is broken so many times. So if you can see, I upgraded the spindles and the hubs to the hot racing aluminum. I've also put hot racing CVD axles in it. And the Kyosho's had no problem. When I first got this Kyosho, on its very first run, a broken axle tube. So I don't know if that was a defective plastic or it was also because it was middle of winter and the cold weather is really hard on these trucks. Plastic and cold don't get along well. So once I fix that axle, it's never been a problem. So, so far the Kyosho has proven to be a way more durable truck. It also handles better. And if you take a look, you can see the Mad Force has kind of an unusual suspension design. So it's only got two links holding the axle in place. And it gets its articulation through flex and links. Whereas the SMT10 has a four link suspension similar to what's used on the real monster truck. It's got two upper links and two lower links. So that's what holds the axle in place. And one of the more unique features about the Kyosho that I really like and I've never had a problem with is the transmission. If you take a look right there, it's chain driven. And what's nice about having a chain is the chain wraps around a lot of the gear. So if you have a gear driven transmission, there's only a little bit of tooth contact in the gears, maybe like two teeth kind of touching each other. But with the chain, it wraps around a lot of the gear. It's a much stronger design. So at that point, it's only as strong as the chain, which I've never had any problems. So right there, I like that design. I think that makes the Kyosho awesome. Then if you wanted to, you could mount two motors in the Kyosho. And if you take a close look, you can see both trucks have upgraded servos. And that's because the SMT10 servo, the factory room broke almost immediately. So I upgraded to a Savix Titanium Gear Servo. So I upgraded the Mad Force just to make for a better comparison, even though it didn't really need it, but I was at the store and they had two of them. The one in the SMT10 is waterproof, the one in the Kyosho is not because that's all I had. So, But I would prefer to put waterproof servos in anything I have. But anyway, so Kyosho Mad Force is mostly stock. SMT10 is heavily modified. So let's see these two trucks duke it out and see which one is better. Alright, so overall it was a pretty easy win for the Mad Force. It way outperformed the axle as far as performance and handling. But the one cool thing about the axle is the aftermarket support. And that adds big time to the fun factor because modifying these things is awesome. It's a lot of fun to make yours different than everybody else's. So, so no doubt about it that the axle has way bigger aftermarket support. So for the Mad Force, really about the only thing out there is like steering upgrade. And there's a couple companies making aluminum axle tubes, which definitely I'm going to upgrade. So, And then there's a the guy, uh, Risky Concepts on eBay. He's got some aluminum parts, wheelie bars, shock towers. 
things like that, but nothing compared to the axle. So, in that aspect, I give the one of the axle. But for me, I'll take the Kyosho over the axle. In fact, now that I did this video, I'll probably be selling this axle, so I'll show you a little closer look at it. So I upgraded this thing a lot. Obviously, I made this body look beautiful. I did those wonderful body mods, so it's a really handsome truck now. But it's taking up a parking spot, parking spot that could be occupied by Cloudbusters, so I don't need all these trucks. I need more Cloudbusters. So I'll probably sell this thing for about $300, so if you're interested, just message me. I'll let you know how to go about getting your hands on it. So I'll pop the body off again, show you a little more. So we've got the Savix Titanium Gear Servo. Right there you can see the aluminum control arms. I forget who makes them. But the uh, Curry Anti-Rock Sway Bars. Those were definitely a good upgrade. Right there you can see the dynamite motor. I took that out of the low C10 MT. Along with the speed control. I don't remember what KV rating. Probably about a 3200 I think. I might be wrong on that though. Hot racing transmission support. I put steel gears in the transmission. You can see the uh, MIP drive shafts. And then the axles, I stripped out the axle gears so I went with uh, hard and steel overdrive gears because it's a little more top speed. Um, titanium steering linkage, hot racing aluminum knuckles. So this has every popular mod done to it. And once I put that dynamite motor in this thing, that's when everything broke. So if you're going to buy one of these new, don't put such a crazy motor in it. Just leave it like stock or put a mild brushless motor. Because if you want to put something potent like this in, Get ready to spend a bunch of money on, like I said, steel gears in the transmission, axles, MIP drive shafts, and a bunch of other stuff. So the only part that's broken on this chassis is right here. Right there you can see the chassis broke in the back. But that piece just supports a battery tray and you can buy just that piece separately. You don't have to replace the whole chassis. So really that's the only part that's broken that I have yet to fix. But it's no big deal. It's been like that a while. It doesn't affect the way it runs. And one other problem I have is if you take a look at the lower spring perch, it's too big. That's because I took it from a associated T5M, so it doesn't fit quite right. The original just popped out, I don't know why. And I still have a couple other parts to put on this truck that I haven't yet. Let me see if I can find them. So right here I have a GPM spur gear cover, aluminum. And here's a GPM steel spur gear and steel spur gear shaft. So if I sell this thing, that'll go with it. And also another part I have, another thing that likes to break on these is there's a little bracket that holds the anti-sway bar in. It holds it in with these little two screws. That likes to break and I have those in aluminum. Those will probably go with it too. So if you're interested, just message me in the comment section below and I'll let you know how to get a hold of this thing. So take care, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.